So a decade ago, I was in a style forum and a guy just bought a, a jacket, I believe it's a quilted jacket. And he got it, shipped it, he had it shipped to him and came, he opened it up. He's looking for the made in England tag because I think it was a thing back then. And he eventually found a little strip of tag inside one of the pockets and it said made in Moldova. And he thought he bought a fake jacket because back then it was well known that Barber, um, all the jackets were made in England. And up to that point, they were mostly. And, you know, after some Googling, we all realized in this forum group, this chat group, that um, Barber, the direction of the company, was um, moving towards manufacturing a lot of their stuff overseas, away from the UK, due to labor costs at the time. And in addition to that, they wanted to expand the core line of the wax jackets and the <clears throat> traditional quilts, the sporting stuff, into a trendier urban stuff. And um, a few years forward, flash forward a few years, you'd find at a department store like Macy's in New York here, or if you go to Selfridges in the UK, or different lower end, mid tier department store, not the high end stuff like Harrods or, or Bloomingdale's or something like that. But you'd find Barber products at these department stores, and they're made in all over the place, and they cost more than the Bedale and the Beauforts that were used in the traditional stuff. And I realized back then, when I the argument came about, that the quality would decline as we saw quantity of goods, type of um, items. Apparently, Barber make watches now, so they make everything now but the quality is diminished a lot. Um, fortunately for us, a lot of the stuff is still made in the UK, um, the core stuff, but, um, but this video drives the point home of how quality diminishes when you move manufacturing overseas from handmade local goods to factory-made, unskilled work workers. Um, and I'm sure the workers in Eastern Europe and Asia are very skilled, but the way it's set up, it's not set up to exploit their skill, it's set up to exploit cheap labor and um, sort of speed up the production of goods. So they want to exploit production speed and cheap, quick labor. They're not exploiting the skills of those workers. Uh, so this video, watch the video and you'll see exactly what I was talking about, guys. Enjoy. It's a beautiful day. It's actually nine, 105 degrees in New York City today. So it's one of the hottest days to do a video on a quilted winter quilt jacket. So enjoy, guys. It was a pleasure talking to you guys. Watch the video. So guys, this is the tale of two barber jackets. Um, one of these jackets is made in the UK. It's the original Exdale, original classic Exdale. And as you've seen in my other videos, I wear an extra small. I'm a 38 chest, five foot, eight inches tall, 160 pounds. And this is the size I wear in this. These are really oversized to fit over like a business suit for a gentleman. And um, that's why they fit really, really big and generous. Now, I picked this one up, um, I had both of these, but I picked this one up recently. This one I've been wearing for a year now, and it's really warm. I might have done a review on the non-tartan version of this jacket as being a really warm, one of the warmest coats I have for winter. This one I picked up <laughs> this year, and this is made, not in England, but this is the new version of the Exdale. And I have to come around, spin it around for you guys to see. And this is the new classic X Dale and extra small, same size as the other one. And hidden under all the tags is made in Indonesia, as well as this wash instruction tags, which I'm not sure these are even machine washable. I don't know why it has that, or hand washable. I think something like this you'd want to take in to Barbara and pay, I think, $15 to clean it and they'll clean it for you through an orvis or something like that. So first off, the first thing I noticed was the quilt on the USA, on the the one that's made in Indonesia. It's really, really thin and flimsy. It's almost like there's no pattern inside. It's like there's an outer fabric and an inner fabric. There's no quilted pattern inside the, um, in between the inner line and there. Um, the tartan here is really smooth and like a nylon material. Whereas over here, the tartan is like an acrylic or wool and it has a nice um, warmth to it. 
Now the pad in here is much, it's much thicker and it's tested to be warm. I've worn this uh, down to the teens and it's really warm with a scarf and a wool sweater and a shirt and tie, whatever. So I uh, once got into an argument a couple years ago on Andy's style forums where I complain that barbers, you, um, the quality is gonna decline when they move shipping outside of, when they move manufacturing outside of the UK. And this is proof that the quality is very much declined um, compared to the original product that's made in the UK, it's made in England. And uh, this actually has the same washing instructions, you never noticed that. So, and you see that this one is lined Sorry guys, what, it says polyester wadding, waiting, and this one doesn't have anything. So I'm going to try these, both of these on and show you guys how they fit. And you'll see in the tailoring, the tailoring is, it's really, really bad on the Indonesian one. Even though the corduroy collar is also thinner than this one where it's a thick, you can see the thickness of the fabric there versus, <laughs> look how thin and cheap that is and funny enough this jacket retail for a hundred and I think 119 US about 15 years ago and this one is about $250 US uh, and you could buy this now at major department stores they sell this one now for about 250 US so let's try these on and I'll show you guys how they look So as you saw there, the classic one, the sleeves are articulated and it fits much more, it's tailored much more to my 38, uh, I guess my 38R body. And uh, even though it's an extra small, it's fitted a certain way to fit my body. The sleeves, the torso, everything lines up. With the Indonesian one, it's like the sleeves are really, really baggy. They're almost like just pipes. And the body, the torso is slim fit, but it's just really long for some weird reason. The stitching inside, I don't know if you guys could see, is really, really sloppy compared to the UK stitching. Like, look at that. That's like night and day difference. Um, I'll bring the camera in so you guys can see. So like, look at the stitching quality. 
between the one that's made in England and this is the one that's made in Indonesia. It's like lots of loose threads, um, stitching. Some stitching doesn't go anywhere. And there's just extra pipe in there that is super, super weird. So overall, like the quality is definitely, um, you can see the sleeves and this one wasn't even articulated. I could hardly move my arms up, even though I'm not wearing a sweater or anything heavy underneath it. If I was, it would be even worse. But the Made in England one is way better. If, in fact, I didn't buy this from a store, I would have thought, and I got this on eBay or someplace else, I would have thought this is a fake jacket, even though it's not. Um, just the quality is like, you can see some of the stitching in there. It's just open stitching. It's, I don't know, it's just very poorly done. Stitching isn't even capped, it just stitches into the collar. But up here you can see it's, um, this one it's reinforced there. Whereas here, it's, it's there's literally no reinforcement. Like I said, I would have thought this was a fake jacket, even though it's not. And that's my review of of this uh, <laughs> these two coats. And basically, it's a review of stuff barber coats that's made in different parts of the world versus barber coats, the original lines that's made in England, um, made in the UK. Uh, most of them were handmade in the UK. And most of the stuff that's made in Asia and different factory or is factory made stuff and it's made in mass in bulk um, to ship all over the world and sell for high prices I think even though it's probably made with cheap labor but the original ones cost is professional labor and it much cheaper to buy 15 20 years ago 30 years ago but now I think it's a sign of the times how quality is superseded by quantity of goods now and that's the kind of marketplace we're in now and that's it, guys.